Hello, this is Chiak. We are playing Nancy Drew's Secret of the Clock. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, because this is an old game, um, the recording software, NVIDIA, and the screen resolution is going to look... The recording act software is acting a little funny, but the screen resolution definitely is going to be... I mean, I don't think 1080p was even invented by then, so... Welcome to my latest case, The Secret of the Old Clock. To start, choose Junior or Senior Detective. If you're new to adventure games or need some help, click on Tutorials. Okay, so I believe this is the... I want to say it's the second Nancy Drew game in the entire Her Interactive series. The year, 1930. The place, the road to Titusville, where we find Nancy Drew behind the wheel of her blue roadster, pondering this question. Why did Emily Crandall, a girl whom Nancy knows only through their mutual friend Helen Corning, ask Nancy to drive all the way out to the Lilac Inn to see her? Does it have something to do with the fact that Emily's mother died barely a month earlier, leaving Emily to run the restaurant with only her guardian to help her? And more important, why, when she called, did Emily sound so desperate? The spunky teenager turns off the main road, blissfully unaware that Emily isn't all that awaits her at the end of the driveway. No, Nancy Drew is about to get her first taste of the mystery, intrigue, and adventure that are to become her destiny. Okay. Uh, Alright, I wasn't expecting... I mean, the game just starts off right away. I'm really hoping because for me the edges of the screen are cut off but hopefully that will not be too detrimental um <laughs> yeah I, I, obviously i clicked senior detective because the, the games at this point senior detective isn't that um um <laughs> um uh how should i say it punishing <laughs> so i have 350 three dollars and fifty cents what do we got? Dad's Rules of the Road. Watch the fuel g Oh no, does this game have driving? Oh no! If you've been around for some time on this channel, and this channel's been around for some time, um, Nancy Drew Games and driving, it's um, it's a thing. It's a, uh, it's, 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 it's hopefully, maybe, maybe it'll, maybe it'll be fine. Okay, Dad's Rules of the Road. You know what I just realized? Never mind. Dad's Rules of the Road. Watch the fuel gauge so I don't run out of gas. Oh god. Avoid potholes so I don't get a flat. Use the spare to change the tire if I do get a flat. And never ever drive without a spare. Find the gas station and get the tire fixed pronto. My father's phone number is KL57187. The phone number for Bess Marvin and George, since she's always over there, is... KL54468. Okay. And there's there's nothing more to that. <laughs> because I'm a senior detective, I don't need the task list. Task list. Alright. Uh sorry about this. Game the setup. The road to Titusville, where we find Nancy Drew behind the wheel of her blue roadster, pondering this question. Why did Emily Cr Oh wait, does this say closed caption? Yeah, 1930. The place, yeah, that's fine. The road to On the move, blah 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 blah. Okay, that's fine. Okay, let's continue game. So, huh. Apparently, there are crows cawing as they do. Can I read the sign? No. Just go in first. Well, hello. I'll bet my bloomers you're Nancy Drew. That's right. Are you Emily's guardian? You got it. I'm Jane Willoughby. I'm Emily's guardian, but only for the next three months until she turns 18. Then she's on her own. Mmm, it smells like someone's been baking pies. Pies are the lilac in specialty. We get orders from all over. Oh, that reminds me your father called. You're supposed to call him. You can use the coin phone on the porch. Emily didn't say anything about you coming until just this morning. Is it okay that I'm here? Don't get me wrong, she can invite anybody here she wants. It's just that she's gotten so darn forgetful lately. 
Is she all right? Well, no, that's hard to say. She misses her mom, that's for sure. So do I. Glory and me, we were best friends, you know? The two of us ran this swell little dress shop over in Capital City. But then she got hitched and I didn't. And the next thing I know, she's writing me saying it would sure take a load off her mind if I could take care of her little girl should something ever happen to her. Okay. I was wondering, like, what is the relationship between uh, Will Willoughby and uh, Emily? Since she's a guardian, but it didn't sound like she was a relative, so... It was nice of you to say yes. I couldn't say no. I mean, what are best friends for? I just wish I knew how to help Emily. You make it sound like she's in some kind of trouble. She's been acting so... Look, go talk to her. She probably just needs to spend some time with a bear cat like you instead of some dumb Dora like me. Go on up. She's in her room. Just make like a Boy Scout and be prepared. Okay. Uh... Duh. There is more than one room, ma'am. Do you mind telling me which one? Okay, I'm gonna see us the end of the hall. Oh, there you are. Yeah, okay. Nancy, hi. Welcome to the Lilac Inn. Oh, and before I forget, thank you for that nice note you sent me when Mom died. It meant a lot to me. Well, I lost my mom, too, years ago. I kind of know how you feel. You and I may not be best friends or anything, but you're still one of the nicest people I know. <laughs> you all see, I mean... <laughs> well, thank you. That's why I'm hoping you'll do me a favor, a big favor. You and your dad? My dad? Helen says he's a lawyer. Shh! What's wrong? I thought I heard something. Your father has a safe, right? This is 1930s. A lot of people have safes. Okay, I'm sorry. It's the 1930s? This is 1930. Lots of people have safes. See this jewelry? I'd like you to take it home with you and put it in your father's safe. It's beautiful. It was my mother's. The few times I saw her wear it, she looked just like a movie star. I was hiding it here in my room, but all things considered, I'd feel a lot better if you would just take it home and have your father lock it up in his safe. What do you mean, all things considered? Strange things have been going on around here. That's all I can say. I know it sounds loony, and Jane probably told you that I've been acting loony, but please do this for me. What was that? Ah! Emily, come downstairs, quick! The kitchen's on fire! Come on, we better get out of here! Okay. This is horrible, just horrible. The fire chief says the stove was completely destroyed and there's smoke damage everywhere. The inn will have to shut down for months, maybe even for good. Am I... Oh, okay, I was like, where... Like, there's usually questions about this. Will insurance cover the damage? I asked the fire chief the same thing. He said there could be a problem. What kind of problem? It looked to him like one of the burners on the stove had been left on. The flame either went out or was never lit, but anyway, something made a spark and boom. He said insurance companies are very reluctant to pay out when things look hinky. And that's when times are good. Okay, so something I just want to look up, like... This is actually the twelfth installment of the game. I don't know why I thought it was the second. But, okay. Interesting. I mean, I'm just, it's like, like after they said the 1930s comments, I'm like, huh? Is it, is it, was she being sarcastic or is it actually supposed to be the 1930s? I mean, just by the car they're driving, it would suggest as such, I guess? Um, I guess there's just no chronological order in terms of any of this. Okay, anyway, so he says insurance companies are very reluctant to pay out when things look hinky, and that's when times are good. Who was in the kitchen this morning? Emily was the last person to use the stove. Like I said, 
She's been real forgetful lately. I think she's pretty upset, but it's not her fault. What with her mom passing away barely a month ago, and me showing up, this total stranger who doesn't know the first thing about kids or running a restaurant, and her trying to do everything all by herself. It's just too much, that's all. Who wouldn't go a little off their nut? <sighs> I better get that. The line to the regular phone got burned up in the fire, so now the only phone we got is the coin phone on the porch. Excuse me. Oh, no! Emily? My mother's jewelry! It's gone! Someone must have stolen it while we were all downstairs. I knew something like this was going to happen. I just knew it. Okay, man, everything is just going off. The jewelry was stolen. There was a suspicious accident in the kitchen. You mean this sort of thing has happened before? Yes. I mean, no. I mean, I'd rather not say. But I will say this. I did not leave the stove on. That fire was not my fault. Oh, what am I going to do? Without that jewelry, I don't have a prayer of paying for a new stove. And without a stove, I'll have to sell the inn. And if I lose the inn... I wish Mom were still here. I wish Josiah Crowley had left us the money like he always said he was going to. That's what I wish. Who's Josiah Crowley? He was this old man that lived next door. He died last year. He spent most of his time here at the inn, and he led my mom and me to believe that he'd left a lot of money for us in his will. He gave us a clock, and afterwards, he'd always point to it and get this little twinkle in his eye and say, Time will tell. But when they finally found his will, he didn't leave us a penny. Maybe he didn't leave you anything because he didn't have anything. Oh, he didn't act like it. But he was rich. His estate was worth almost a quarter of a million dollars. Everything went to Richard Topham. He's this man who claims to be able to help people develop their paranormal powers. Okay. <laughs> Why do you suppose Josiah left everything to him? Josiah was kind of a screwball. <laughs> One time he showed up at my birthday party dressed as my great aunt Harriet. I didn't know it was really him until two days later. Anyway, he had all these weird hobbies, and he always thought it would be really keen to read minds. Josiah invited Richard Topham to move in so Topham could help him develop his paranormal powers right there in his house. Josiah was a sweet old man, and I do miss him, and he was free to give his money to whomever he wanted. But to get our hopes up like that, and then leave us nothing, it just wasn't like him. Where is Richard Topham now? He still lives in Josiah's house, which is right down the path out back. His house and the inn were built at the same time by two brothers during the Civil War. Okay. Was your mother's jewelry insured? Gosh, I forgot about that. I don't know. Jim Archer, I bet he'd know. He's our banker. I guess I should go talk to him. Not one of your favorite people, huh? Oh, no. Mr. Archer's very nice. I mean, for a stuffy old banker. I'm just so bad at business things. And Jane, my guardian, she tries hard, but she's no good at it either. Maybe you could go talk to him. Please? It would be such a big help. Sure. He runs the Main Street Bank. You can't miss it. I'll call him and tell him you're coming. Okay, there is driving in this, there is driving in this game. How many people knew you kept your mother's jewelry in here? No one. Well, Jane, my guardian, she knew, but I didn't tell anyone else. I'll be back in a little bit. Don't forget to call your father. Yeah, I know. I, I like honestly, I would be, tr I would be doing that, but so much has happened already. <laughs> so much has happened. This game starts off with a, with a nice drive and then a bang. Okay, let me just use this phone here. Drop a nickel into the slot, please. Do where where is? Wait, where's this? Oh, here's the slot. Okay. Drop a nickel into. There we go. Now, how may I be of service? Oh, so this is why the KL. I was wondering, I'm like, what the hell is that? I'd like to talk to Carson Drew. His number is KL five seven one eight seven. Hang on a minute. Carson Drew speaking. Hi, Dad. Well, I see you got to Titusville, okay. The car ran like a top. It ought to. That's a fine car. You treat it well, it'll treat you well. I was told that you wanted me to call? 
I need to get some documents from a colleague over there. I thought since you were in the area, you could pick them up, save him paying postage. Sure. What's the address? He said he'd just leave them for you at the telegraph office. Just drive into town and look for tubby telegrams. He said you can't miss it. Will do. These papers are extremely important, Nancy. I will pick them up, Dad. Good. Remember, watch your gas gauge and get gas when you're low so you don't run out. And try to avoid potholes. The more you hit, the likely it is you'll wind up with a flat. Yes, Dad. And if you do get a flat, take it off and put on your spare, and then head straight to a gas station and get it fixed. Yes, Dad. All right, lecture over. Have you found out why Miss Crandall asked you to visit? She wanted me to have you lock her mother's jewelry up in your safe. Only someone stole it before I could take it with me. Stole it? Good gosh. That was right after the stove in the kitchen exploded. The stove exploded? Sounds to me like you'd be well advised to cut your visit there short. No, I want to find out what's going on. I have to find out what's going on. You have to? Well, yeah, you know. Emily just lost her mom, and she's worried about losing the inn, and her guardian's all wet when it comes to helping out, and... And the truth is, you are so curious that you feel like you'll absolutely burst if you don't find out why all these weird things have been happening, right? Yes. Don't worry, I know the feeling. You're a chip off the old block, I'm afraid. Well, as long as you're like me in one other way, you should be fine. What way is that? Smart? Careful. Okay. Uh... If somebody says they're going to leave you something in their will and then doesn't, is there anything you can do about it? Not a thing. Whatever's in writing is the only thing that counts. Unless, of course, the will was tampered with or forged. And you can prove it. If not, you're out of luck. Why do you ask? Emily's neighbor, Josiah Crowley, told her and her mom that they were going to inherit part of his estate. But when he died, his will left everything to this ESP expert named Richard Topham. That's too bad, but this Crowley fellow was free to leave whatever he wanted to whomever he wanted, I'm afraid. People do change their minds, you know. I met Emily's guardian, Jane. What does a guardian do, anyway? A guardian is pretty much a surrogate parent. Jane is legally responsible for Emily's physical and financial well-being. Jane doesn't strike me as being the parental type. In fact, I get the impression she's in way over her head. Fortunately for her, it's not forever. Most guardianships end when the ward turns 18. And then both Jane and Emily will be free to do whatever they please. If Emily sells the inn, will Jane get part of the profits? If she's Emily's guardian at the time of the sale, yes. Are you suggesting that Jane's primary motivation is greed? Good grief, where did you get such a suspicious mind? I think it was from the person who has always told me that the best way to solve a problem is to look at all the possibilities, Dad. I did say that, didn't I? Goodbye, and Dad. Goodbye. See you <laughs> We're gonna leave it off of that. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> what the? Hello, cat. Okay. Um, oh god. Why am I so nervous about driving into town? This is how, how is this going to make me drive? That's the question. Hmm, that car I saw before is gone. Oh, oh. Okay. Uh, wait, but how do I know the space bar to park? I'm gonna assume I don't. We're just gonna take this carefully. Oh my god. <laughs> but seriously. Is there a map? I mean, at least I can't crash into a cow. Adele Jewelry. Oh no, there's a... Okay, yeah, so there is no map. The Rex, Public Library. Oh, Main Street Bank. Uh, uh, uh. I'm gonna assume I park. <laughs> this is, Hello, this I'm is... looking for Jim Archer. Right through that door. 
Hello! Are you Nancy Drew? <laughs> Sounds like Emily called you. Yes, ma'am. Jim Archer. I'm founder, president, manager, and just about everything else you can name when it comes to this fine enterprise. <laughs> I hear that some businesses aren't doing so well these days. Ever since the stock market crashed, one business after another has closed, including banks. President Hoover keeps saying that a recovery is just around the corner, but you have to wonder. Is your bank doing okay? I'm happy to report that we're doing just fine, thank you. Excuse me. Main Street Bank, Jim Archer speaking. No, I don't. I'm sorry, but... Yes, I know, but... All right, then just bring it by. Okay. Sorry for the interruption. How can I help you? <laughs> Maybe you don't want to show that to in front of your customer, but okay. Do you happen to know whether the jewelry Emily inherited from her mother was insured? Well, I know for a fact that it was not. Why? Because someone snuck into the inn today and stole it. Oh, no. I heard there had been a fire in the kitchen, but when it rains, it pours, doesn't it? I told Gloria not to let that policy lapse. That sounded like that oh no was the worst oh no I have ever heard. <laughs> it's like oh god, that sounds really that sounds really tragic. God, these things just happen, I guess. Anyway, why did she let it lapse? She felt that since Josiah Crowley would be leaving her a large sum of money when he died, or so she thought, paying to insure her jewelry just wasn't necessary. How well did you know Josiah Crowley? Well enough for him to name me executor of his will. An executor is the person who makes sure the terms of a will are carried out. <laughs> okay. Why do you think he wound up leaving Gloria nothing? I have no idea. Truth be told, he'd given me the impression that I would be well taken care of when he passed on too. But when I finally read his will, it all went to top him. Okay. Where did Josiah keep his will? He'd hidden it in a chest of drawers in his house. It took me months to find it. When he named me executor, he said he'd tell me where it was hidden when the time was right. Whatever that meant. How did Josiah die? He was sitting in the public library reading when apparently his heart just decided it was time to stop. What was he reading? His favorite book, The Makeup Secrets of Lon Chaney. Okay. The will you found in Josiah's house. Is it possible that Josiah didn't really write it? Well, the thought that it could be a forgery did cross my mind. But an expert verified that the will had been typed on Josiah's typewriter and signed in Josiah's hand. But Richard Topham lived in Josiah's house. He had access to his typewriter, and he could have copied his signature. As far as the law is concerned, the matter is closed, Miss Drew. But it's possible that Josiah's real will is still out there. Are you sure he never gave you any clue as to where he'd hidden his will? Whenever I asked him, he said he'd tell me when the time is right. Although, he got a safe deposit box here about three years ago. Has it been opened? Topham has tried to claim its contents, but he can't find the key. Okay. If Topham can't find the key, maybe it's because it wasn't in Josiah's house. Now, Miss Drew, I wouldn't go jumping to any conclusions. How well do you know Jane Willoughby? You know, Emily's guardian? Not well at all. Met her once or twice. Seemed a little flighty. What was Emily's mom like? Had a good head on her shoulders. Friendly, too. Having a big slice of blueberry pipe the lilacan was always a real treat. It'd be nice if family could carry on the tradition, but times are just too tough. If she's smart, she'll sell before the bills start piling up. I guess I'll be going. Nice talking to you. Okay, so there is that. Oh, I, I literally pressed spacebar to see if I could click on anything, but I can't. Uh, is there anything I can look at in here? Don't you ever use this typewriter? That used to be Josiah Crowley's. Oh. It was the only thing he left me in his will. Naturally, it doesn't work. The keys always jam. October 9, 1929. Dear Mrs. Sheldon, here is the trivet I said you could borrow for your party at Twin 
Elms. Please take care of it because I will want it back someday. Your friend, Josiah C. I wonder if Josiah ever got his trivet back. What's a trivet? I don't know what trivet is. Anything else? I'm like so tempted to click spacebar, even though I know it's not going to bring me anything. Wrong game. Okay. What the? What is that? Who's Clara? Clara Pickford is this lonely old woman who comes in here every once in a while. Took a shine to me for some reason. Insisted on giving me that picture. To Jim Archer, my ace in the hole. Affectionately yours, Clara. Where did you get this clock? Josiah Crowley gave it to me. <sighs> it stopped keeping time the minute he walked out the door. Looks like the key is missing. Yes, I uh, lost it some time ago. Oh my god. This is the clock. This is the clock. This has to be the clock. Okay, so we need, at some point, we need to find the key. Safe deposit box, which we don't have the is key. Is this your car? Yes, it is. Bought and paid for. Who's the lady, though? Okay. So we can't get to the safety deposit box. Um, God. Oh, come on. Oh, wait. Something I can do for you? Well, my name's Nancy Drew, and my father Say said Say no that... more. You're here to pick up some papers. They're in that envelope. Thank you. You're welcome. Say, is that your roadster out there? Yes, it is. Did I park somewhere I shouldn't have? No, no. It's just that my regular driver never showed up today, so I've got no way to deliver all these telegrams. Are you telegrams. kidding me? <laughs> How would you like to earn some extra cash? You mean you want me to deliver them for you? You've got a car, you're trustworthy, or at least your father thinks you are, so what do you say? I'll pay you 25 cents each time you complete a delivery. And you might even get some tips. I'm kind of curious how much, because this is the 1930s, like, when they said quarter of a million, it, to, to, like, nowadays is not going to sound like a lot, but back then, whew. I mean, it's not like we have a choice. Okay, well, sure. I mean, we have right. a choice, you're but hired. money. Here, deliver this to Seymour out at Blenheim Nursery. Come back when you're done, and I'll pay you and give you another telegram to deliver. Great. See you in a little while. Okay. Do we get a map? Like, can we have a map, for the love of God? I don't know where the hell Blenheim is. It's to the state line. But seriously, where is... more than one place. Well, I'm gonna get gas here. Welcome to Zippy's, where zipless service is zippily zapped and zippy service is the zippiest. Fill her up. Really? That's okay. I changed my mind. Bye. Okay, well, I know where the gas station is. Observatory, okay, I don't think it's gonna be up there. Hello? I literally do not- I wish there was a map. I need a map, for the love of God. What did I- what did I stop on? There's lilac, lilac in. Oh, right here. Hello, I've got a telegram for Seymour. Just leave it on the desk there. I'd uh, tip you, but as you can see, my hands are filthy. What are you doing? I'm trying to doll up some of my plants before this guy named Mr. Martin comes in. He's a big cheese at some oil company, and I'm hoping he... Ow! Did that plant just bite you? It did kind of feel that way. I think I'll be going now. Bye! <laughs> She's like, uh, yeah, we're not dealing with this. Goodbye! I know. Okay, I mean, we're going to have a better idea of all these places. 
Oh, that's the academy. Where's the telegram place? Here, go. Did you deliver that telegram? Sure I did. sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. And here's your next telegram. God damn it. Take this to Counselor Alice out at Camp Avondale. Keep up the good work. I mean, I guess technically this is going to like give me an idea of where places are, but at the same time, I feel like everything could be so big that I'm going to get in trouble here. Camp Avondale. That's the. Uh, can I? Okay, I know Zippy's is here. Welcome to Zippy's, where Zipless service is Zippily zapped, and Sh Zippy Sh service Sh is get, the get, Zippiest. Just fill the gas, please. Fill her up. Just twenty-five cents worth, please. <sighs> That'll be twenty-five cents. Here you go. Thank you, Miss. Anything else? No, oh. thank you. How Drive expensive is gas? Twenty-five cents. Okay. Camp Avondale. Oh, I found it. <laughs> Hi, I've got a telegram for a counselor here named Alice. That's me. Hang on. Oh, go dry up, Jason. <laughs> what a jokester. Anyway, thanks. I'm afraid I don't have any money to tip you. That's okay. Have a swell day. All right, swell day. Swell day, everybody. Okay. Uh here this way, right? What? Did I knock into something? Oh, the tire won't come off with a lug nut still on. Are we are we good? There. Okay. I hope I don't get another flat, but I better go to the gas station and get my spare fixed, just in case. We just came from the gas station. So I'm just wondering, like, is it because I knocked into something? This is the one thing I don't know. Welcome to Zippy's, where Zipless service is zippily zapped, and Zippy service is the zippiest. Fill her up. Could you please fix my spare tire? You betcha. I find it kind of weird because the spare tire is technically on there the vehicle right Good now. Good as new. But... That'll be two dollars. Here you go. Thank you, Miss. Anything else? No, thank you. Drive zippily. Oh God. So yeah, did I hit a pothole? Like, what happened there? Did you deliver that telegram? I sure did. Good for you. Here's your money. And here's your next telegram. Deliver this to Mr. Jones at Vash's Dairy. Keep up the good work. God. I'm regretting this already, but I need to know the lay of the land, so to speak. I haven't, out, I haven't been out this way, so let's just see. I hear cows, so... Uh, I would have to assume it's over there. Okay. Hello. Get off my property! Now! And take that infernal noise machine with you! Fine, I'm going. Whatever you say. Yikes. Okay. At least that gives me an idea. General store. What did they do about the cow? I can't... There's a cow in the middle of the road. Is there another way? Here you go. 
Oh no. Hello, I need to deliver this telegram to Mr. Jones. That's me, thanks. You can tell me I'm all wet, but I don't have any money to tip you with. Wait a minute, here, how about a nice fresh glass of milk? Uh, no thank you, bye. Okay. The good work. Okay, I'm going to assume that there is no end in sight for this, because I've been at this literally forever. And I think it just keeps going and going and going and going. So I'm gonna deliver this and then I'm gonna call it a day because I literally been at this forever. Mr. Jones, I'm gonna have to fast forward through Muriel this. Work here? You bet. Here, I can deliver that for you. Need some sour milk? Makes great pancakes. Uh, no, thank you. Bye. Okay. But I'm gonna see if I can head back. This will let me know if I can head back. Okay, so there is, I thought there was like, okay, somehow accidentally hit the wrong key. Um, but yeah, okay. I thought that was like a particular mission and then it'll end. Like in those games, in the Nazi Drew games where you're like making, you're setting up everyone's breakfast and then handing out to them and at some point it ends. But that just keeps going forever and ever. I'm assuming. Oh, 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 oh! I missed it. Got it. Looks like someone recently had a key appraised. A miniature golf course. Swell. Oh God. <laughs> Make par for course win a prize. To start over at any time, take a new scorecard. Don't forget to dump your old time. Okay. Uh, if I don't need to do this yet, we're not. We're not doing it. Nope, 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 nope. Okay, either way, I need to end the set here. So, thank you for liking if you liked, thank you for commenting if you commented, thank you for subscribing if you subscribed, thank you for favoriting if you favorited, thank you for simply clicking on this video. Until next time guys, see ya!